everybody, I'm Erica and this is Friday Sews and this is my channel Dizzy Knits and Curls where sometimes I talk about retro beauty and hairstyling and sometimes I talk about knitting and sewing and today is a sewing day. I'm going to try to make this video really fast because it's really hot <laughs> and I have my AC off right now so that you don't hear it. It's one of those portable units and it's like super loud. So I had to turn it off to make this video. So that's enough waffling. Let's get into it. <laughs> so first of all, I want to show you what I make. I made this week. Um, I made a few things this week, but this is this dress. I will step back and show you the full length. There it is. Okay. So what this is, it is a shirt dress made of knit fabric. I've been wanting to find one like this for a long time. So this is a shirt dress, like I said, made of knit fabric. The pattern is the Ragamuffin Outlaw Lady Dress. And um, it comes with like a bajillion options. It is crazy how many options this thing comes with. So it has like Western style yokes on the front and the back that you can put in. It has where you can make it just like a solid bodice with a collar. It has two collars. This is the pointed collar. It also has a rounded collar, which I'm gonna try next time. It has a slim sleeve. It has a bubble sleeve. It has this puff sleeve, which is what I used. Um, the skirt is actually my lady skater dress skirt, which is just a half circle. And then I also made this little belt, which is just a rectangle that ties around the waist. This does have a waist seam. Things I would change on this, I made the size medium. I would raise up the bodice length about an inch so it sat here at my waist instead of being a little bit under my waist. Um, but I was really nervous about this pattern because I was like, can I make it look like the 50s house dress that I want it to look like? How weird is it gonna be to do like an opening front with like a closure on a knit, you know, is it gonna work? And it did, this is my test fit. I'll be making another one. There's a couple little wonky things about the collar, but it'll be better next time. I had to sew the collar on twice. Um, sewing a, so the collar, one size is interfaced. It's interfaced on one side of the collar and it has a collar stand as well. And then the other side is just regular. So one side has become basically a woven with no stretch. And the other side is still a four-way stretch knit fabric. This is a DTY poly. That's a four-way stretch. So trying to manipulate the collar so that the stretchy bit went evenly onto the non-stretchy bit was a little strange, but it did get there in the end. Like I said, it took about two tries. Um, and then I've got this front button placket. These are actually snaps that do come apart. Um, and I could have put another snap in, but I kind of like it a little bit more open in the neck. So that's why I didn't do that. I was really nervous about putting snaps in. I'd never done it before. And um, basically, this is ca they're cam snaps, which is like supposedly the best kind of snaps. I don't know. They were really good though. So you get this plier tool thing. I got this on Amazon. So it's this whole case with like a plier tool thing. And there's like um, these different little casings and you put the casings in there and then you, you know, push it together to make the snap close. And you also get an awl to pop holes, which was invaluable. So I got this whole thing. I was so nervous about this. And then it came with this collection of snaps. For this one, I used the white ones. Um, and this worked really well, like really, really, really well. And I was nervous because back in the day, I used to make corsets and I had those eyelet plier gun things. And those required an incredible amount of hand, hand strength and arm strength, or they wouldn't stay in, you know, they fall out your corset. And I was really expecting this to be the same way. I'm like, am I even gonna be able to close the pliers? Like, because let me tell you, I thought it was gonna be like, welcome to the gun show. And I'm, I am not, <laughs> I'm not a very strong in the arm person. You know, I mean like, there's, there's not a lot happening here. 
but they were really easy to close and it stayed and the snaps do work. So um, I was pleasantly surprised by cam snaps. I will definitely make that again. My sewing machine doesn't do good buttonholes. It just, I mean, it does, they're okay, but they're not too, they're not what I want them to look like when they're done. They're just not as clean as I like. So I've been very reluctant to make anything with a front closure, but those days are gone. Um, Cause I'm, I'm gonna be making all the things cause I have this now. All right, so that is this dress all done. Um, I'm going to show you, talk to you guys about the next thing I did, um, which is, I'm not going to be trying these on. Um, I just am going to go through my story about them. I might put it on the mannequin. Everyone, please welcome Missy back to the show. Hi, Missy. So, I talked last week about the Style Arc Twisting Tilly shirt, which was the very low neck top, v-neck top with the twist in the front. So I made a test fit using scrap fabric. I mean, literally, it's like two different prints. It's, it's madness. Um, so I made this test fit and it came out pretty good. This shirt fits me wonderfully well, really, really well, except the one problem is it gaped in the bust. So everything fit perfectly, but there was like this little bit of gape right here. So I pinched that out and I was like, if I pinch that out, it'll sit perfectly and I'll have a really well-fitting shirt. So that's what I tried to do. I tried to pinch it out on the pattern, but instead of putting darts there, I decided to be clever and just take it out of the pattern. So let me put on, if I can even get it on her, because this came out so small. So let me tell you my big mistakes here. So the first thing I did wrong was I took too much out. So this shirt is tremendously tight on the mannequin, on me. It is too small. And part of that is because I made the change I did. But then a big part of it is because instead of using four-way stretch, which the other one was, I used two-way stretch. So it just doesn't have enough give. So let's talk about style art's pattern for the Twisting Tilly. Because I will be making this again, and I actually got, I got a solution for it, for making it fit right, I hope. So the Twisting Tilly top, style art's directions, are really bad they're not they're not good at all they're not inclusive at all of what you need to know there's a couple not great diagrams that aren't clear um, I had to go and try to find videos there were some terminologies that are um, Australian terminology so I had to um, like search for that and I'm googling these words and I'm like what is this and then it takes me to the Style Arc website where they have a glossary where they tell you what all these words mean. And I was like, oh, so that's really helpful. I will put a link to that down below. If you try their patterns and you're not Australian or you don't know Australian sewing terms, it was a huge help. So that happened. But yeah, the directions are bad. But the drafting on this is spot on amazing. All the pieces fit together beautifully. Um, the sizing was as expected. It's, it's incredible. Like it's so well done. I wish someone else would write their directions because if you're used to indie patterns that like really walk you through things, have lots of pictures, have good explanations, this is not that. They are terrible in my opinion. So it's worth it. I think to try style arc if you are a more advanced sewer and I'm not an advanced sewer, but I've sewn a lot of things. So I think if you're more experienced, they're worth a try. If you're brand new, like do some other things first because they're confusing. Um, so I had the gaping problem, then I had the it's too tight problem. 
So I went to the Kittenish Behavior Facebook group, which has amazing seamstresses on top of being uh, the community that was started by Sean, I'm probably saying your name wrong, who is Kittenish Behavior on YouTube, who I watch and love. And if you're not subscribed to Sean, you should definitely subscribe to her. And then you should subscribe to Rachel Elizabeth of Stitched Up because she's the one that gave me a great idea on how to fix this. So what she said was, you've got a deep plunging neckline and four-way stretch. You need to put some sort of stay stitching or interfacing or something on that neckline so it doesn't stretch out. Because she thinks that the shirt fits me the way it's supposed to, it's just the neckline needs something to reinforce it because the neckline is a four-way stretch and it's on that deep V. So that's what I'm gonna try. I got some tape, some like um, I thought um, was uh, like hem tape, like the sticky kind that you just iron on, but it's not, it's the sew-in kind. So I can't use that. So I'm just gonna take a piece of interfacing, like I used the interfacing for this uh, I still have some of this collar interfacing I used left. And I'm just gonna iron that to these V-neck edges of this blouse and hopefully have something to show you next week because I want this shirt to work for me. Um, I also shortened the sleeves, which is probably how I'll wear it. I might never wear it with long sleeves, um, but I like the idea of it being like a short sleeve top. And I would encourage you to make it, if you do, out of four-way stretch fabric because if you do it with two-way, it will be too tight. All right. I have a couple more things. Last week I showed you guys that dress with the bishop with the crazy bell sleeves. I'm going to throw that dress on for you really quickly so you guys can actually see it this time. Hey, we're back. So this is the Pattern Emporium Dream On dress. It has the tiered skirt with the allure bell sleeves. So I love this thing. I freaking love it like I'm like whoosh I'm Lily Monster like it's <laughs> it's such a mood um it's got a really good fit and uh, I love this dress I um I'm so glad I actually can like show it to you guys this week this is the bell sleeves are sheer like I said up to here where the lace is and they're solid I just could not love it more it makes me so happy and then I think when I wear it, I'm going to often wear it with like a belt. I've got this little black kind of lace stretchy belt. And look how cute it is when you add the belt. And it is 90 degrees today. So I only will be wearing this for the short time it takes to finish our video. But I mean, really? Yes, I love this thing. This is gonna be so cute with boots in the fall and winter. Halloween collection is sorted. So yeah, that is the dress on. I definitely recommend both the Allure pattern from Pattern Emporium and this, um, this Dream On dress. It's really cute. So speaking of Pattern Emporium, <laughs> They are doing a contest right now. If you've made anything that is a Pattern Emporium make for winter, you can um, enter it into a contest. I'll put a link to their website down below so you can find all the deets. And um, basically, you can win free patterns. So it's worth a try if you've made any Pattern Emporium stuff. Or, hey, there's still time. I know it's like July here and it's too hot in uh, a lot of the world <laughs> to be thinking about winter clothes. But, you know, if you got any leftover from last year, you can uh, you can even share older pictures. That's fine, as long as it's all pattern emporium. So I cut out a dress to make for this because um, I'm part of their inspo team. So, uh, you know, Kate asked us to, to please participate and so I'm here. Um, so this is the follow me wrap dress. This is the fabric I'm using. Isn't that cute? It's this plum with like yellow and pink flowers. I feel like it's very fall and winter appropriate. So my plan is it's the follow me wrap dress, which has a bodice that is quite similar to the bodice on this dress that I'm wearing. 
but it has a faux wrap skirt. So the skirt has this like flouncy wrap that goes around the bottom. And then I made, I'm making bishop sleeves, which I got from the True Romance shirt. So it's these big bishop sleeves with a cuff. So that's what I'm doing for it. Um, I hope that some of you guys out there participate because it's just a fun idea. And I think she is going to do a summer one as well, which will be easy for me because I've made so much summer pattern pouring stuff. It's getting ridiculous. So anyway, um, that is what I've been doing this week. Um, I'm going to spend the rest of the day um, lying around <laughs> and trying not to be too hot. But uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.